Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure and an honor for me to address you from the platform of the right doctors.com. And we are going to talk about the radiology and imaging of uh, COVID-19, how it's actually playing a role both in uh, diagnosis and more importantly, in the treatment of COVID-19. We all know that uh, it's the RT-PCR uh, test, which is a molecular diagnostic test, which is the, the gold standard for diagnosing COVID-19. However, there are times when imaging begins to play a role in the early diagnosis. And we will go through how it is actually changing the way the patient is treated. Can it prognosticate? Can we tell you which patient is likely uh, to become serious? Which is a patient who may actually go on to a ventilator? We will see if and how imaging can play a role. And so if I could have my first slide, please. So we do know that uh, there is a lot of data that's available to us today regarding COVID-19. And uh, in this, uh, there are areas where we are comparing uh, the imaging with RT-PCR. We do know that RT-PCR is uh, a false negative in about 30% of patients. So does radiology play a role there, especially if someone has the typical symptoms of uh, uh, COVID-19, the influenza-like illness, at times even severe uh, acute respiratory illness with RT-PCR being normal. Uh, we do have the imaging societies like the Radiology Society of North America, the Fleischner Society, our very own Indian uh, Radiological and Imaging Association that have come up with the guidelines uh, for the use of uh, COVID-19 uh, and the use of imaging in COVID-19. And if we uh, have the next one, please, we can see what role each and every imaging modality is playing. X-ray, although it is less sensitive than a chest CT scan, this is typically the first line imaging modality for patients with suspected COVID-19. Now, who should undergo a chest X-ray? Is it someone who's got cough, fever? Uh, and, uh, you know, what we are seeing is that uh, the referring physician will send them for RT-PCR and at the same time ask for a chest X-ray. Really, every patient does not need a chest X-ray or any kind of imaging. Those with mild disease, and we now know four months down the line that about 85% of patients have mild disease. Many of them are even asymptomatic. So these people will not need a chest x-ray or a CT to begin with, unless from mild they get into moderate or the severe category. Also, within the hospital, when we are using a x-ray, especially with patients who are admitted, we prefer to use a portable x-ray at the bedside of the patient. And within the fever clinic, which most hospitals have, again, a dedicated portable x-ray is put inside that triaging area or the screening area or the emergency area where COVID patients are kept because you have to segregate COVID patients from the non-COVID patients so that they don't end up infecting the non-COVID patient. This is very, very important that there be no mixing because we do know that patients who have comorbidities and the elderly actually end up having a much more severe disease 
And so this has to be avoided. And that's done by putting these non-expensive portable machines within the emergency department, within the triage area, and also within the uh, uh, COVID ICU and the COVID ward. You need to remember that even in severe cases, a chest X-ray may be normal in the early case, generally not, but in mild disease, it will mostly be normal. In some studies of patients with COVID-19 requiring hospitalization, 69% had an abnormal chest X-ray on admission and 80% developed abnormalities during their stay in the hospital. It is to be noted that findings are most extensive about 10 to 12 days after symptom onset. The next piece. Now, here you will see the typical lesions of COVID-19. It's like any other pneumonia, but it's an interstitial viral pneumonia. And what we see is that generally the lesions are bilateral they tend to be more in the lower lobes and they are peripherally located so they are near the chest wall as these arrows uh, show you and they are subplural in location also it is important that pleural effusion fluid within the within the pleural cavity and lymph node enlargement lymphadenopathy is seen only in about 2% of cases, so it's very rare. So if you have pleural effusion, then the chances are on a chest X-ray that you're not dealing with a COVID-19 patient. However, a word of caution here, that if there is pleural effusion in COVID-19, the prognosis is generally worse. Also, we have you know, what we call ground glass opacities, this is how they are described, but it doesn't matter how you describe them as long as if they are there, you're able to see them and you could try to make a provisional guess that this could be COVID-19. The next, please. It is also important, like I said, that lesions may not be seen very well on chest X-ray and as this case exemplifies, on your left is a chest X-ray, on your right is a coronal image from a CT scan where you can see on the chest X-ray, the image looks absolutely normal. Whereas on the CT scan, as the arrows point out, there's a fairly large opacity, which is in the right CP angle region. And so this highlights the fact that a CT is better. And in case a patient is going downhill or a patient is in serious disease, the chest X-ray is normal, then we may have to do a CT scan to know the exact extent of involvement of the lungs. The next please. Now, as we go forward, we talk about point of care ultrasound. Ultrasound, as you know, is a small machine you can take it from one part of the hospital to the other and in most cases who are within the intensive care unit in case there is need then the first imaging that you do is a portable x-ray after an x-ray if you want to do something more then it is POCUS short for point of care ultrasound this is done either by a radiologist or a critical care specialist, a pulmonologist. And this actually answers a specific question. This also is very operator dependent. You have to also realize that the doctor doing the scan will be very near the patient because you actually have to move the transducer over the patient's chest cavity and hence this is used where necessary predominantly in the icu or in the wards it is the portable x-ray which is used and the next here it's a you see typical 
multiple lines on a, a, a ultrasound uh, image we th see irregular thick plural line with scattered discontinuities we can see consolidation or pneumonia we can see uh, pneumonias of all kinds and also if there's fluid then an ultrasound is the best to show that fluid and also it can show you a large pneumonia whether it's reducing in size or not but like i said a, a, as we will see on the images uh, uh, next that this is to be used in specific clinical conditions N next please and here you see these are uh, the typical normal lines which we see and what we find when there is a, a, you know uh, a consolidation within the lung pneumonia within the lung the pattern of what we see actually changes completely and now we move on next to uh, the role of uh, the most important imaging modality uh, especially in the hospital setting ct we will look at the common imaging features role in initial diagnosis role in prognostication and then we will uh, talk about evidence-based uh, recommendations from us which are very similar to what uh, have been uh, uh, written about and uh, the guidelines given by various uh, imaging societies across the world at the end of april we actually our group uh, in caring which is the center for advanced research in imaging neurosciences and genomics performed a meta-analysis and systematic review of literature available today and out of the 677 studies available in pubmed database we shortlisted and reviewed 49 studies which included about uh, 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 4100 patients uh, out of which about 3600 were COVID positive diffuse bilateral ground glass opacities were more most common findings in all stages of the disease followed by consolidations and mixed density lesions and important to note that 78 percent of patients with rt-pcr confirmed covid 19 infections had either ground glass opacities consolidation or both so next and we'll see some of the images uh, as we go forward this is how we did our meta-analysis uh, and we could move forward please quickly huge uh, uh, extent we went to and this is an important slide results now here were about 3500 patients who had rt-pcr confirmed disease and about 500 odd who did not have covid 19 and we if we did a meta-analysis of the CT findings in these patients, what we find is that there was an overlap. And this uh, overlap, and, and the orange represents those who were not COVID, and the blue is COVID patients. And you see that even in the typical findings of ground glass appearance and pneumonia, there was a lot of false so called positive that were picked up in the non-COVID category. So because of this overlap, even though CT is a very sensitive tool to pick up abnormalities of COVID-19 in the lungs, even though there are typical lesions that we find on a CT scan and in the typical location, just as we talked about on X-ray, but 34% of lesions which were called as typical COVID-19 lesions on uh, a CT scan actually were not COVID. So this is a learning for us. There was 34% false positive. And that's why I would like to emphasize that CT is not to be used for diagnosing COVID-19. For that, we, will, we still use and will continue to use RT-PCR testing, which is the gold standard. And, and I'll show you now some images uh, uh, of the CT scan. Let's go forward. Uh, this is how you know we, we've talked about it in our paper. 
which we published uh, in the first week of May. We've talked about the common findings and, uh, uh, you know, there are specific findings, uh, halo sign. You know, radiologists are very fond of giving names to lesions and distribution of lesions, again, similar to what we found on a, a X-ray, frequently bilateral, peripheral, subplural, lower lobes more commonly involved. And, uh, uh, you know, what we found that in 7% of RT-PCR proved COVID-19, 7% were negative. So 7% of patients may still have no lesion seen on a CT scan, but 93% do show up lesions. And that's very important to remember as we take a look at the lesions. Now, ground glass opacities, as the name suggests, you know, you can see these are typically, and they are most frequently very common seen in 56% of patients in our review and uh, consolidations, mnemonic lesions in about 40%. And together, when we look at them, in about 78%, you had either ground glass or consolidation or a com combination of the two. Uh, and, and we'll see some more images as we go forward. These are, again, ground glass uh, lesions. On your right are uh, mixed lesions and uh, let's go forward and see bilateral again you can see they are near the chest cavity subplural in location uh, the axial images on top and the coronal images below and let's move uh, ahead uh, uh, septal thickening and and there is also described this crazy paving pattern crazy as we have on our floors Similarly, in this, you can see, you know, there are those lines which seem to in intersect and cre create a typical crazy paving pattern, which is septal thickening in the background of uh, uh, ground glass opacities, these septal thickening appearing denser. And, and you can see those thin lines within. These are commonly seen in advanced cases. And here again, this is uh, what happens later when you start getting uh, fibrotic changes. There is healing happening. There, the healing may completely resolve and no lesion may be seen, or you may be left with this typical uh, subplural thin line, uh, 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 dense dark line, and with uh, development of uh, fibrosis. So in severe cases, one may be left with residual deformities of fibrosis. Next, please. Uh, vascular engorgement may occur, and this is supposed to be a typical sign. Let's uh, move forward. Uh, and, and again, uh, crazy uh, paving and the typical, uh, you know, dilatation of the pulmonary arteries, the reverse halo sign. You have thickening at the periphery and lucency uh, centrally. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, see a few more cases. Again, the typical pneumonia, which we see, you can see within that the bronchus, and, and so you can see uh, 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 the typical pneumonic pattern, and you can have multiple lesions, multiple lesions. Next, please. The vacuolar sign, this uh, dark vacuole, hypodense within the the uh, uh, mnemonic patch uh, next please these are again some typical signs that are described and we'll move forward now very quickly uh, uh, to this emerging concept which uh, you know we've been hearing for the last month month and a half which is that uh, this covid 19 also leads to thrombosis within vessels and that can cause uh, pulmonary thromboembolism and this can be a devastating complication this can also happen in the brain leading to strokes peripherally leading to gangrene and and so on and so forth so this hypercoagulable state that develops also needs to be remembered and this is one time when we will also need to inject contrast generally in covid 19 we would be doing 
a non contrast ct scan but if we suspect thrombosis thromboembolism then we will need to do a contrast enhanced ct scan now again an emphasis on the role in initial diagnosis well in the early part of the outbreaks the outbreak the hospitals in wuhan china were extensively using ct scan for screening patients with symptoms suggestive of novel uh, coronavirus infection and the, some studies initially showed better sensitivity for ct as compared to rt pcr performed within 3 days of onset of symptoms and there were arguments in favor of such extensive use of ct and some groups still argue the same uh, but at that time why did they use ct they use ct because an rt pcr report was taking 6 to 7 days to get also we know now from our own meta analysis that a, there is a 34% false positivity rate so many of those patients in the initial study that were labeled as covid 19 possibly were not covid 19 and so the role in initial diagnosis of ct is limited of imaging is limited however there is one specific area where ct can be used which is in case clinically we suspect a patient has covid 19 disease there is the typical symptomatology but the rt pcr test is negative in such cases there is a definite role of using ct and seeing whether there are any lung lesions because there are now enough examples around the world where the initial rt pcr came negative a ct was done which showed lesions in the lungs and then a subsequent rt pcr test done a day or two days later came out positive and this is because in the initial stage the viral load in the nose in the throat may be low and the rt pcr test which is really dependent on how well a sample is taken from the nasopharynx or from the oropharynx and it may come negative ct here has a role because when you are suspecting covid 19 you cannot let a patient out to go and infect others and in case ct shows up positive such patients should be you know, quarantined or isolated or kept in hospital at their home otherwise they'll end up infecting people and this is one area where even in the initial stage of diagnosis ct has a role now ct also has a role in prognostication this is very busy slide but we won't talk about it but if there are extensive lesions within the lung we know that this patient may have a serious disease also if on whatever therapy you're using the lung lesions continue to increase the volume of lesions within the lung continues to increase then you know that this patient is in for a rough ride he may worsen and may actually need a, a ventilator support on the other hand if your treatment is working and the lesions become uh, lesser now here if you see this is a patient where over time initially the lesions increased and then they regressed and this is a serial ct scan in a 35 year old uh, woman and and with pneumonia and you can see the change that happened in 7 days from an initial increase dense consolidation to healing later on and so it has even been uh, uh, we could go on please it's even been uh, 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 we talk about the ct severity score where you look at how many lesions there are how many uh, parts of the lung are they involving and from that you can have ct severity score of 1 to 4 and this can have a role to play in prognosis it is also known that whether to put a patient prone or supine or in a recumbent position can also be helped by using a ct and so it does play a role in in uh, managing therapy 
whether you are to put the patient on remdesivir, whether you are to give any other treatment, all of these CT can play a major role. And here you see a patient who worsened. And you can see the PAO2 from 95 came to 84, and the lung lesions became much, much worse. Uh, next, please. Now, we will end with these last three, four slides. Uh, we have given recommendations which are evidence based from caring. And the recommendation one is CT should not be used for screening or initial diagnosis of COVID-19 and the evidence is that at least 7% of patients had no findings on CT scans and CT scans were findings were reported as typical of COVID-19 by radiologists in 34% of patients with non-COVID-19 pneumonia. Of course, with the exception that which I've talked about that if your clinical suspicion for COVID-19 is very high, RT-PCR is negative, then CT can play a role even in initial diagnosis. Uh, uh, and, and as we go on, we talk about... Uh, 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 now, the other recommendation. CT can be used to identify early markers for lung impairment in symptomatic patients with RT-PCR proven COVID-19 disease. And the evidence for this is prominent pulmonary vessels near the pulmonary lesion or microvascular dilatation has been shown to have worse clinical course and pleural effusion or lymphadenopathy have been seen in association with a high viral load again may lead to worse outcomes then the next recommendation ct can be used for patients with non resolving symptoms to study progression of disease and the evidence is there is a clear progressive pathway of CT findings correlating with clinical findings, as we saw in that case, where along with worsening of the CT findings, we saw worsening and dropping down of the oxygen levels. And, and so it is very important in those who are worsening, getting severe disease, to use a CT scan. And CT has a, a limited role in stable pediatric patients because the evidence is that up to 60% of pediatric patients in our meta-analysis had ground glass opacities and consolidations on CT and all of them showed complete resolution of the disease. So these are young patients. Uh, uh, we should use radiation as little as possible and hence let's try not to use uh, uh, a CT in the pediatric age group unless there is some pressing clinical need. Now, X-ray should not be performed on patients with history of fever, dry cough, and high pretest uh, uh, probability of COVID-19. RT-PCR instead of X-ray should be done in such cases. And X-ray should not be used as a screening modality for COVID-19. What we are finding is that most prescriptions say RT-PCR and X-ray in the same breath. There is no need for X-ray in those who have mild disease because x-ray i can tell you will invariably be normal in these cases so number one why do it number two many hospitals may not have fever clinics may not have a segregated place where they can actually do x-ray of a covid 19 patient and if they come into the main radiology department they may end up actually infecting other patients who don't have COVID disease. Do remember that any patient who comes into a hospital has comorbidities. And with comorbidities, if these people get uh, uh, COVID-19, then their prognosis is much worse, the disease is much severer. And so X-ray has to be also done selectively. And with that, I would, I would say that I've tried uh, uh, to take you through the present uh, role of imaging in uh, both the diagnosis as well as treatment of COVID-19. There is an important role, but the 
imaging as a technology has to be used very judiciously and also within the radiology departments we have to be very very careful that we do not end up mixing covid and non covid patients and and that could be a lecture in itself as to how go about how to go about uh, minimizing the risk not only of other patients of the relatives who may be accompanying them but also of healthcare workers who work in the same department so in summary i would say rt pcr is the gold standard for diagnosing covid 19 x ray has not to be used in mild covid 19 disease ct may be used in mild disease or even moderate disease where the symptoms suggest covid 19 and the rt pcr test is negative there may be a role for diagnosis there and of course there is a well defined and very important role for ct in uh, the icu uh, for uh, critically ill patients for those with serious disease and point of care ultrasound has an important but limited role in the icu uh, but can play a role Uh, since it's portable so it can be a supplemental role to an portable x-ray in the icu setting thank you so much for tuning in and uh, please stay safe and have a great day insights from the world's best medical minds you are watching the right doctors.com